out, children! Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Hello again, scholars. Welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and master educator attempting to bring you the best in art historical content. If you like this one, please interact with it. I appreciate that very much. Are you kidding me? Now, there have been a few videos where I've talked about video art and video artists and, and artists that kind of specialize in this facet of art. And today I want to dive deep and give you kind of an overview. I get a lot of questions and, and uh, messages about like, what is video art and what isn't video art and what's the difference between that and other forms of art. So I want to dive in and just kind of cover that just a little bit for you today. The Sony Corporation set the stage for the beginning of video art in 1965 when they introduced the first portable video recording camera. Although this camera was cumbersome, some artists were drawn to the new media. Primarily, the instant feedback of video does away with any sort of developing process. These videos could be stored on inexpensive cassettes, erased, and re-recorded. In addition, because the video signal can be sent to more than one monitor, it allows for flexibility in presentation. Are you kidding me? Early video artists were relatively simple, consisting mainly of recording of the artists that were performing themselves, or of a dramatic scene staged with only a few actors and props. Editing was difficult, but they would discover that the medium was most well suited for private screenings. In 1972, the compatibility issue was resolved with the introduction of the standard 3 quarter inch tape. This allows the artist to work with television production equipment and even to be able to broadcast the results of their labor. In the 1980s, there was a great deal of improvements to video technology in the forms of lighter cameras, better color, and computerized editing. In this relatively short history of video art, some artists have tried to expand the limits of the medium's technological capabilities. Nam June Paik, an artist that we've talked about before, frequently used video as a medium in a quasi-humorous fashion to comment on the role of television in our lives, as we can see in his 1986 work, Video Flag Z. In this, he uses 84 television sets in an arrangement that resembles an American flag. On each monitor, portrayals of old Hollywood films flicker endlessly across the screen, as if our national identity is made up of what we've seen in movies, and he might not be far off. One of his students, Bill Viola, is leading the video art movement to this day. In his state-of-the-art technologies, he shows us his mastery and ability in an ever-changing art medium. Without question, Viola is one of the biggest influences in video art from the 1970s until today. His work as a whole looks at things that everyone can relate to, the ideas of birth, death, religion, and so on. His video installations have been the backdrop of Nine Inch Nail concerts, as well as Richard Wagner classical music performances. I love that video. I hope you did too. Thanks for watching. There's nothing like good clean business, huh? And a little monkey business. <laughs>